Hello, friends, and welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. I want to discuss with you what you see right here, phys.org, where they examine in the study methane release rapidly increases in the wake of melting ice sheets. Okay, so what's going on? First of all, this is a photo of uh, lumps of carbonate that are littering the seafloor. And this is uh, where some, quite a bit of methane is uh, leaking from. Now let's start out with uh, an interesting thing here. It said, ice ages are not that easy to define. Well, you we kind of say, well, you, you got ice, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Not as obvious as it may seem. Ice age has constant glaciations and deglaciations. Ice sheets growing, ice sheets receding, depending what the climate is doing. So the ice, you know, wax wane exerting and lifting pressure from the ocean floor, from the continental uh, rocks, you know, basically there's a, a thing called isostatic rebound. And what that is, is we have all, you know, massive weight of the ice sheet on the, say, the continents. That weight actually pushes down on the land, actually pushes on the crust, compresses it a bit, I say even into the mantle. And when that ice melts out, you relieve all and release and relieve all that pressure, all that weight, the ground actually starts moving upwards. That's the isostatic rebound. The elevation comes up because all that pressure, all that weight has been released. So specifically to this case, this study here, several studies also show that the most recent deglaciation in the Holocene, approximately 21,000 to 15,000 uh, years ago, of the Barents Sea, okay, the Barents Sea, that's basically off uh, Scandinavia uh, to the uh, west of the uh, Novaya Zemlya, has had a huge impact on the release of methane into the water. A most recent study in geology looks even for a thousand years ago and contributes to the conclusion. Melting of the Arctic ice sheets drives the release of potent greenhouse gas methane from the ocean floor. There could be a couple of reasons for that. You start warming things up, you warm up the oceanic waters. Oceanic waters warmer, it'll help start thawing and melting the clathrates and the hydrates. And it seems that what they're saying is also the, re the relief of this pressure. In our study, we expand the geological history of past Arctic methane release to the next to last interglacial, commonly referred to as the Enian period. We have found that the similarities between the events of both Holocene and Eemian deglaciation advocate for a common driver for the episodic release of geological methane, the retreat of ice sheets. And that's a statement from the researcher Pierre-Antoine de Zandier. He was the lead, uh, he conducted the study as a postdoc. And we worked with a whole bunch of folks there, at, uh, including UIT, Arctic Institute of Norway, uh, the CAGE Center for uh, Arctic Gas Hydrate Environment. Study is based on measurements of different isotopes found in sediment cores collected from the Arctic Ocean. So they're looking at the scene, thousands of years of methane released in tiny shell. In my isotopic fractionation video, I explain how this whole process works, how isotopic fractionation is, a, is an extremely important technique, analytical method that climatologists use to understand what happened in the past. You can look, you look at the isotopic ratios to uh, ascertain what the sea levels were, what the ice levels were, what the temperatures were, CO2, et cetera, et cetera, even if the thermal hailing flow was running or not. Please check out my isotopic fractionation video 
if you have not done so already. Or maybe it's been a while since you viewed it. Check it out again. Okay, different isotopes, the same element, have different weight. Basically, what differs is the number of neutrons. The number of protons, which identifies the element, always stays the same. Carbon always has six protons. Change the number of protons, you get a different element. But you have carbon 12, 13, 14. You add the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Carbon 12, the most common isotope form of carbon, has six protons, six neutrons. 6 plus 6 equals 12. Carbon 13, 6 protons, 7 neutrons. Carbon 14, 6 protons, 8 neutrons. And you can do the same thing for o, uh, 16 and 18. Oxygen has 8 protons. 8 plus 8 is oxygen 16. 8 plus 10 is oxygen 18. And, you know, nitrogen, etc., etc. You get the idea. If, so different isotopes have different weights and thus will interact with other chemical elements in the environment in specific ways. So you can use the composition of these isotopes and you can correlate it to environmental changes. Temperature, amount of methane, amount of CO2, amount of carbonate. You get the idea. So you, this record is kept within the sediment. The isotopes are taken up and stored in the shells of organisms, the foraminifera, the radiolarians, the diatoms, and so on. And we measure those isotopic ratios. We get the fractionation. And from that, it's proxy data, granted, but from that we can then develop past climates. For the so these isotopes are stored in the shells. They get archived in the sediments for thousands of years as the organisms die and get compressed and they fall to the sediments, to the substrate, and they get compressed down, so on, so on. If methane was released for longer periods of time, the archived shells get an overgrowth of carbonate, which can also be analyzed and tested for isotopes. So the isotopic record showed that as the ice sheet melted and pressure on the sea floor lessened during the Eemian, methane was released in violent spurts, slow seeps, or some combination of the two methods. By the time the ice disappeared completely, some thousands of years later, methane emissions had stabilized. I will. This is a, a little animation. Uh, showing uh, the growth of some ice sheets here to get an idea. Starts at 37,180 years ago. A little orientation. This is uh, Scandinavia. Here's the, uh, the UK. Um, there's Iceland, the Via Zemlia. And uh, yeah, Let's, I'll show it to you uh, later. And also, I think the, uh, the uh, animation shows the changing sea levels. So that's why maybe some of the features don't appear as obvious. Like, for example, you know, where Denmark might be. But let's uh, go through the rest of the text, and then we can take a look at the animation. Arctic methane reservoirs consist of gas hydrates and free gas. Gas hydrates are solids, usually methane gas frozen with water. And it's uh, extremely susceptible to pressure and temperature changes in the ocean. These reservoirs are potentially large enough to raise atmospheric methane concentrations if released during the melting of glacial ice and permafrost. Technically, permafrost thaws. The ice within permafrost does melt, but the permafrost, the substrate itself, thaws. The geology study reinforces the hypothesis that the release of this greenhouse gas strongly correlates with the melting of the ice sheets is also an example of the past showing what the future may hold. You've heard me say many times, if you want to get an idea of what's going to happen in the future, look at the past. The present-day acceleration of Greenland's ice melt is an analog to our model. We believe that the future release of methane from below and nearby these ice sheets is likely, said uh, de Sandier. Increasing uh, methane emissions are major contributor to the rising concentration of greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere. 
right? We know that from the permafrost thawing and the, you know, what's going on, for example, in the uh, East Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Laptev Sea and, you know, the Barents. You know, we've seen lots and lots of methane being released. I've discussed this with you in uh, other uh, prior videos I've done. So these increasing methane emissions could be responsible for up to one-third of near-term global heating. Methane is about 80 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas, but typically uh, only lasts about 20 years before it oxidizes into carbon dioxide. So the effects will still persist. But, yeah, so the methane, you know, degrades it oxidizes after 20 years but it's still being replenished so and we're seeing if anything the, the concentration of methane is increasing during 2019 about 60 percent 380 million tons of methane released globally was from human activities natural sources contributed about 40 percent 230 million tons how much methane eventually made it to the atmosphere during the Eemian and Holocene deglaciation is unclear at this point. Part of the problem in quantifying this are the microbial communities that live on the seafloor and in the water and therefore use uh, methane to survive. So biological processes make ascertaining whether the sources are biological or uh, abiotic, abiological in uh, term. Both these past deglaciations happened over thousands of years, while the current retreat of the ice sheets is unprecedentedly rapid based on compared to the geological record. The projections of future climate change should definitely include the release of methane following in the wake of diminishing ice sheets and with the subsequent rebounding of the land. The past can be used to better inform the future. Yes. So let's uh, take a look at this animation. Let's see if we can go full screen here. And uh, now the animation runs from, as you can see, 37,180 years before present, and it stops at about just under 8,000 years before present. So it does not take it to current uh, situation. So just bear that in mind. And what you will note is you'll see these ice sheets grow and diminish at, at different uh, rates. Here we go. You see, we've got pretty extensive ice sheets there. Now it's starting to diminish. And quite rapidly. And you can see a lot of it uh, disappeared. So what we uh, this is about where you get into the, the uh, let's see a little further. That's a probably that's this is about in the uh, the Holocene era, and then by the time it ends at around uh, you know eight thousand years before it, I'd take that to be the Eemian uh, era. So um, it's kind of and we'll, so what they're hypothesizing is that as the ice melts back, it uh, promotes 
uh, the release of methane. So you could, I, you can conceivably see a positive feedback loop occurring where you're increasing the level of methane, so the atmosphere warms up, which will then further accelerate uh, the warming. And then when all the, when most, if not all the ice is gone, then the release of methane seems to stabilize, and then perhaps this, eventually the Earth can, will cool down a bit or will absorb the methane drops out and then you could start reversing it to promote the growth of uh, the ice sheet plus you know you need to couple that with what the what part of, of the milankovitch cycle what stage you are at there so um just some interesting little bit uh I just wanted to share that hypothesis with you because I find that interesting. And um, I, I, I appreciate how the uh, researcher here uh, basically uses the Greenland as the modern day or current day uh, analog. And you can maybe even uh, look at the Alpine uh, glaciers if there's uh, you know, any methanes in the rocks there as perhaps another source of methane. Now this one I'm just speculating off the top of my head, but uh, it would be interesting to see if there are studies along those lines. So, melty ice sheets relieve the pressure and weight on the land, and maybe you increase the methane released into the atmosphere as the planet warms. Thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.